technology iphone 14 plus versus iphone 14 pro which one to choose now the reason i'm making this video is because a lot of people say just get the 14 pro it's only a hundred dollars more it's a way better option than the iphone 14 plus well let's talk about that here in this video the iphone 14 plus is going to run you 899 and can go well over a thousand if you are looking for a 512 gig option so at that point you are in the pro territories and it kind of does make sense to get a pro you get more cameras more premium build if you're going to be pushing past the entry level 128 gig iphone 14 plus so the 14 plus i do agree with many of you it's incredibly high priced especially when you go into the 256 gig but 899 that might be more of an option for some people Discussing the price on the iPhone 14 Pro, $999 to start, it stays the same as the iPhone 10, which I like because if you didn't buy something like an iPhone 10, I ever since then, man, if you've been holding out for your iPhone and you buy one now at the same price an iPhone 10 would have cost, that's what this cost, you're getting a 10 times better phone right here with the 14 Pro. $999, and it goes up from there if you want more storage like I did. I had to pay a little bit more like $1,200 to get this 256 gig version right here so do keep in mind that the 14 pro is a little higher now when it comes to the body and the build here there are some stark differences mostly on the edges the edges of the iphone 14 plus are definitely cleaner and they don't get as nasty on the edges but the back is glass so it can get more smudgy than the iphone 14 pro However, do keep in mind, even though this phone is larger than the iPhone 14 Pro, it actually is lighter and it feels much lighter because you're using a big phone that's lighter than a smaller phone. This just feels like a little weighty in your pocket. Also, keep in mind that on the camera housing, the 14 Plus, while it is dual camera, which is not very special, it does have a cleaner you know, build around here. Just wanted to mention that. On the front, you do see the notch there and an expansive 6.7 inch display. Now, comparing that to the 14 Pro, smaller phone indeed, but definitely giving you more premium edges here, although they are more smudgy. You can see right there, they get really greasy right there, especially if you're eating some french fries, a burger, whatever, you're going to get that really greasy. Now, on the back, you're going to see this is a matte texture, a lot cleaner on the back. A lot of people do prefer this, but one thing I really dislike about the Pros, and I have for years, is right here in the camera housing, this area is like impossible to keep clean and I'm not pulling out the cube tip every day for this thing. So my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is my daily, is just so dirty up in here. You can see definitely a lot more smudgy, but at the same time, it does look classier. It does look cleaner from a distance. So overall, the iPhone 14 Pro is the more luxe feel here, the more premium feel, but the iPhone 14 Plus also feels nice. It feels like the entry level premium, whereas this is like going all out right here. You'll see the dynamic island also makes a big difference in letting people know you have the newest and latest and greatest iPhone. So you'll want to choose based on that. Holding them side by side though, you can see what a 6.1 looks like next to a 6.7. It's a pretty big difference. The 6.7 is substantially bigger to hold day to day, but because this phone is lighter, it's actually not too much different in terms of weight than the iPhone 14 Pro for your day-to-day -day usage. Now, when choosing amongst displays, you are essentially choosing big versus smaller here, but it's not just down to that. You are also choosing a brighter display if you pay the extra and go with the iPhone 14 Pro. Especially in sunlight, it will crank up much higher. There is a trade-off of that brightness, though, and that is you are going to get lower battery life than the iPhone 14 Plus, substantially less battery life. As a matter of fact, not only having a smaller cell, but also pushing more brightness, 14 Pro does not compete with this phone there. However, having that brighter display can be important to some people, but that's not even the biggest difference. The biggest difference is the smooth 120 Hertz. That is pretty substantial when it comes to, you know, just deciding on which one you're gonna drop near a thousand dollars on. This one over a thousand, but near a thousand. I think the 14 Pro gives you the better panel overall. It's smaller, but it is the better panel between these two. One thing you'll have to choose though is that if you like the notch or do you like the and do you like the look of the dynamic island? Because honestly, I think the notch is a little bit less distracting, but 
I like what the software does for Dynamic Island. So let's get something that looks quite similar here, like a blue sky, for example. And you could take a look. The notch is similarly large. It's just that the Dynamic Island just sticks out like a sore thumb. So I kind of like the notch when it comes to consuming content, but I do like the Dynamic Island for making it look like you're having the more modern phone as well as using it and interacting with the software. In addition, when you turn off the iPhone 14 Pro, we do have always on display, which some people, including me, have said is a little bit too bright. I would have it was a little darker. It looks like it's on right there. But with the iPhone 14 Plus, classic, no always on display. I don't think this is a deal breaker for a lot of people, but do keep in mind, the display experience is definitely more feature packed on the iPhone 14 Pro but there's one big plus for the 14 plus and that is that you are getting a bigger display so if you want more panel for less price that's that's the key that's the key separator right there but if you want the better panel get the 14 pro now when it comes to software these aren't drastically different but i would say the iphone 14 pro is the better pick because you are going to be dealing with the the newer dynamic island. So when you do use this phone, you can interact with this dynamic island up here. And for that reason, it just doesn't feel like a yesteryear iPhone. It feels like something totally different. And because of that, that software feature or enhancement alone, I do think this is the better pick in software. Also, you do have the A16 Bionic chip in here, which definitely is gonna give you Probably longer term software support, we'll see. Usually Apple keeps them updated around the same amount of years and the launch year they come out on, but having the newer chipset also guarantees a little bit more performance than the iPhone 14 Plus. So software and performance, I probably would steer you towards the 14 Pro. Also in the camera, you'll have the extra software features of raw photos, the extra software camera zooming and things like that that goes along with its hardware improvements. So yeah, overall, that's the move for software because this is just your standard iPhone with a notch. Not much else to talk about here. Both do have action mode and camera though, which is definitely a new software touch, but that's mostly based on the camera. So yeah, 14 Pro is the move for software. If you guys wanna see a speed test, let me know, but I will tell you that the 14 Pro performance wise feels faster mostly because of 120 hertz. It also is a little snappier with the A16, especially in gaming. The 14 Plus though is also very fast, faster than a lot of Android phones I've tested, even with faster refresh rates. So very fast with its A15 Bionic and six gigabytes of RAM on both. Performance wise, you can buy either and be rest assured you're gonna have a great experience. But I think you're gonna have a really great experience on the 14 Pro just because of its smooth refresh rate. So definitely 14 Pro, the winner in performance. Now when it comes to the cameras, I'm gonna try to cover this in less than a minute here. There's not much to talk about. You, you can see it right there. Any person can see three versus two, that's a greater number, that's greater cameras. But it's not only greater in the number, it's literally greater in other ways. It has macro mode, no macro mode here. More zoom less zoom, also 48 megapixel raw camera on board with raw editing and things like that. You know, over here you have nice cinematic modes, you do have nice video modes, and both cameras are stellar performers. Uh, indeed, they both will give you amazing results. Don't get me wrong, they're both using Photonic Engine. However, the iPhone 14 Pro is clearly the win for a camera. We, we pretty much know that already. We know Apple is definitely using the lesser premium camera on the 14 plus. So pick the 14 pro hands down. If you're trying to really go to town and upgrade that camera experience. Now, when it comes to battery life, I will tell you that both of these phones right here are pretty good. They're both all day phones, but you just cannot touch the 14 plus. As a matter of fact, the 14 plus is better than the 14 pro max on battery life. This has the same size as that, phone right there, but at 4323, but the iPhone 14 Pro has 3200. They both have the same fast wireless charging, but I can tell you all day, every day, pick the 14 plus if you want longer battery life. If you're okay with a day of performance and you're a little bit lower, you gotta hit the charger maybe before you go to bed, you'll like the 14 Pro. 
But if you want that all day and two day maybe battery life, you want the 14 plus every day of the week. Couple other things to mention, the iPhone 14 plus does top out at 512 gig storage. So if you do want one TB of storage, you have to go to the iPhone 14 Pro. However, keep in mind that is gonna cost you several hundred dollars more, so we're no longer talking about a price difference or close value there. Both these phones do have pretty loud speakers, but the iPhone 14 Pro speakers on my testing was about two to three decibels louder. So this actually has louder speaker performance, like audio performance when you're listening to music out of your phone than the iPhone 14 Plus. In addition to that, I will tell you that both of them do have crash detection and Apple's laying the groundwork right now for emergency SOS via satellite. So that's a nice new touch for both of these phones and they both house that. Phone call quality and things like that are essentially on the same level. They both do feature the same Qualcomm X65 modems on board. Essentially, you're getting two phones that have way better signal strength than prior iPhones. So they're very good in that aspect. So I just wanna bring it all together. Face ID on both, no touch ID either. This is not really that difficult of a choice, but I do think that some people are looking for the best value and let's break it down. If you value, listen, listen up. If you value a better deal when it comes to the latest innovations, the better cameras and a premium design, you want the iPhone 14 Pro. You will be much happier even if you have to sacrifice the larger display and you're not trying to go all out for a max phone. Now, if you value the better deal when it comes to the battery life, the larger display, and having a cheaper price with a lighter kind of feel, you'll definitely like the 14 Plus more. So these two phones, while not really the same type of phone, they are both iPhones and they're both around a thousand bucks. So whichever one you resonated with more in that conclusion really is the phone you should go get. You'll be very happy with that. Keep in mind though, both of these are a sacrifice in certain areas, which is why I think the ultimate iPhone is the 14 Pro Max, neither one of these. But if you pick either, you should probably be happy with both of them, but you'll be regretting the 14 Plus if you really want the 120 hertz display. That's the real big thing there and you wanna be on Dynamic Island. You'll be regretting the 14 Pro big time if you want long, long battery life and you want a larger panel. So that's how I would decide between both of these. If you found the video helpful, entertaining, informing, click the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you all in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here and peace.